Good morning. Uh oh, I'm, think, I'm hoping I'm not going to sound like Darth Vader here. <laughs> Good morning and welcome, and a special welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online. I am Reverend Jody Topping, and it is my privilege to serve as pastor here at Song of Life United Methodist Church. And I want to welcome all of you who are here in the worship center and also welcome those of you who are worshiping with us um, online. And if you are worshiping with us for the first time uh, or for the first time in a long time, we are especially glad that you're worshiping with us and uh, we're very glad that you're here. So um, I don't know how many of you have been keeping track of uh, our COVID cases here in this area, but in the zip codes around the church, uh, which includes Queen Creek, Santan Valley, and Gilbert, and then the, the really southeast part of Mesa. Um, we're currently at a seven-day average of 161 cases per day, which is bad. Um, a month ago, we were at 17. So um, I'm gonna get on my soapbox here for a moment. If you are not vaccinated, I urge you to consider getting vaccinated. And if you have questions about the vaccine um, or if there's any way that I can um, have a conversation with, with you uh, to maybe help answer some of those questions because trust me, we have the news on 24 seven almost at our house. And uh, whenever something about the variant comes up, I, I listen to it right away. So, um, but more importantly, if you know someone who has not yet been vaccinated, um, urge them to consider it or just have a conversation to find out why. And, um, you know, because the, the, the thing that, uh, what I've been hearing, the thing that is going to um, get us out of this, um, this spike is getting vaccinated. And so we urge you all to get vaccinated as soon as possible. All right, friends. I know that those of you here in the worship center are already um, have already registered your your attendance. Um, those of you who are uh, online, uh, I would invite you to register your attendance as well. Um, you can do so either by clicking on the connection card link at the top of your screen and filling out our connection card, or if you have the church center app on your phone for Song of Life United Methodist Church then you can easily use that to check in uh, for your attendance. All right, friends, um, are you ready to worship? I know that I am. Today we are talking about blessings and we are looking at the ways in which our lives have been blessed. And so this morning, we are going to start out with a song um, called For Every Blessing. Uh, I'm gonna go grab my music and I'll be right back. for all the blessings of the year. And you'll notice on the screen, you not only have lyrics, but you also have music. our liturgist, Bonnie West, to come and, and lead us through our call to worship. Well, I guess I don't need to introduce myself, do I? <laughs> <laughs> As people of faith, 
we are people who are blessed, whether those blessings are tangible or not. Let us then offer our gratitude for the blessings from God with our call to worship, which will be displayed on the screen. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. A steadfast love endures forever. forever. Give thanks to the Lord and call on God's name. Make, Make known, known God's, God's deeds among, among the peoples. God blesses us with gifts of love. With, with food, food and, and clothing, clothing, families and, and, and homes. God blesses us with daily work and all we need from day to day. God protects us when we are faced with danger and guards, guards us, us all from, from, from every, every evil. God calls us to be in a relationship with God and forms, forms us, us into, into holy people. Therefore, give thanks and praise the Lord. We, we give, give thanks, thanks to our Lord forever. forever. Let us continue our worship with our hymn of praise, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. It's number 400 in the United Methodist Hymnal. The lyrics will also be on the screen. We have a children's message, don't we? All right, I'm going to switch over to this camera here and bring you this storybook. It's called The Blessing Jar. Now, I found this book on Amazon, and I just couldn't resist getting it. Besides, I also had points, so it made it cheaper. <laughs> but I also brought my blessings jar. So I'm going to share with you a couple of pages of the book first, and then I am going to ask you about your blessings, kids. So I want you to think about that while we hear part of this book. Punky Grace frowned as she stared out the window. It was a grumpy morning, an icky, awful morning. I really wanted to practice my dance with Kiana today, but can't she play even if she's sick? Punky's grumpies would not go away. As soon as Punky walked into the kitchen, her grandmother noticed her sad face. 
is someone having a bad morning? I'm having a grumpy morning, Grammy, an icky, awful morning. Nothing fun is going to happen today. Granny gave Punky the it's going to be okay kind of hug that only a Grammy can give. I know the perfect cure for the grumpies. Look what I've got here, Punky. Grammy showed her a big glass jar. It's a blessings jar. Why don't you go? We go on an adventure today and try to fill the jar with things that remind us of God's blessings. Punky thought about it. She did like adventures. Let's see, said Grammy. I know you like helping Mummy in the garden. Let's add a flower to the jar and maybe you won't feel so grumpy. Grammy took a beautiful red bloom and dropped it into the blessings jar. Now you'll remember that flowers are one good thing that God gives us. I bet I could find some more blessings, Punky said. She twirled around her room in her ballerina tutu. I love to dance around and around and around. Is dancing from God too? Of course, God gave you healthy twinkle toes to dance on. What can we use to help remember, said Grammy. Punky looked down at her feet. Let's put my ballet slipper in the jar after I put on my adventure clothes. As she and Grammy headed toward town, Punky began to forget how grumpy she was, especially when she saw her grandpa by the ice cream stand. She smiled as she licked the scrump delicious ice cream that he handed her. It was bubblegum flavor, her favorite, and chocolate, her second favorite, and strawberry, her third favorite. Maybe today won't be too terrible, Punky thought. Thanks for the triple dip dipper, Poppy. That was a yum, yum, yummy blessing. She looked at the picture of the ice cream cone on her napkin and dropped it into the blessings jar. Now the story goes on to, uh, for the rest of the day. Every time Punky goes to some place or does some activity, she finds a blessing that God has given to her. So I thought that today we might just do some brainstorming. What are some of the things that you are blessed by? Now, I can't hear the kids that are um, worshiping with us online, so I'm going to have to rely upon my big kids. I have some little cardboard hearts here, and I want you to think about what are some of God's blessings, some of the things that God has given to you? What do you think? Family. Family. All right, give me a moment here. I've got to write it on the card here. F A M I L Y. And we're going to drop that into the blessing jar. What's another one? Yes. My dog. Dogs. Dogs are definitely a blessing, except when they wake you up barking it in the middle of the night, <laughs> like mine does. What else? Friends. Friends. Oops, I almost misspelled it. Friends. What else? Good health. Good health. Yeah. Good health. Good health. Sunshine. Sunshine. We get a lot of that here, don't we? I hope you guys at home are thinking of some blessings and writing them down too. Sunshine. Are we seeing any ma many or are we seeing any of them pop up in the chat, maybe, Mr. David? You'll check and see. All right, what else? Our church. church. Our church. 
All right, our church. What about Barbara? Medicine. Medicines, yes. Indeed. And rain. You guys are good at this game. All right, what about life itself? Yeah? Betty, did you have one? Children. Children. And I'm going to say, oh, I only have one more. But I, I, I didn't get life in there, but we'll definitely add that later, probably next, next service. But what about God's love? You know, God's love is probably the best blessing of all, wouldn't you say? And so we definitely need to add God's love as one of our blessings. You know, there's a song that we're going to sing later today called Count Your Blessings. And that's one of the things that we need to do every single day. We need to remember that we are blessed people, even during times when we don't have everything that we want, or maybe even everything that we need. We need to think about the ways that we are blessed and the ways that God has especially blessed our lives. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for the many blessings that you have given to us. Help us to be a blessing to one another and to those who we meet out in the world. Help us to be a blessing by sharing your, your blessings and your love with other people. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is the ending of the parable of the lost son, as written by the evangelist Luke in chapter 15, verses 25 to 32, as found in the Common English Bible. Now his older brother was in the field. Coming in from the field, he approached the house and heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked, what was going on? The servant replied, your brother has arrived and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he received his son back safe and sound. Then the older son was furious and didn't want to enter in. But his father came out and begged him. He answered his father, look, I've served you all these years and I never disobeyed your instruction, yet You've never given me even so much as a young goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours returns after gobbling up our estate on prostitutes, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. Then his father said, Son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. May God add blessing to the reading of the scripture.
So this morning, in case you haven't already guessed it, we are talking about blessings today. Um, and we're also doing it by looking at the other part of the parable of the prodigal son, the ending of it. Now, I know we talked about the parable of the prodigal son last Sunday, but we didn't talk about this part. And so uh, let's get right down to it. As we all know, the pro parable of the prodigal son is a well-known story, even for those who aren't regular churchgoers. A man has two sons. The younger decides he wants to sow his oats. So he tells his dad to give him his inheritance now while the father is still alive. Now that in itself is troubling enough. It's as if the younger son is treating his father as if he is already dead. However, in spite of his son's impertinence, and his lack of respect for his father, the father says, okay. And the boy takes the inheritance and squanders it on what some translations call extravagant living. We all know what that means, right? Well, finally, the inheritance is gone, and the, uh, the young man is forced to get a job feeding pigs. Well, after wallowing around with the pigs, the boy finally comes to his senses. He decides to humble himself and ask his father if he will take the son back as a servant. So the son goes home expecting to become one of his father's hired hands. But instead, his dad welcomes him back into the family. Grace is granted. All is forgiven. The fatted calf is slaughtered, and the father throws a grand party. They celebrate because the lost has been found. And you know, that's usually where we stop reading the story, right? Because when we do, we are left with a happy ending. I mean, who doesn't want to end a story with a party, right? But that is not where Jesus ends the story. In true Paul Harvey fashion, Jesus goes on to tell us the rest of the story. Now, while the, the household is welcoming the younger son back home, the older son, who has been working out in the fields, is blissfully ignorant about his brother's return. And when he comes back to the house, he hears that not only is his brother back at home, but that his father has thrown him this gigantic big welcome home party. And that makes the older son much like the proverbial not a happy camper. In fact, he is downright angry. He refuses to welcome his brother back home. He refuses to go inside and join the party. So his father tries, he comes outside and he tries and tries to get the, young, the older son to come in. He even resorts to begging, but the older one sticks to his guns. And that is essentially where Jesus ends the story. He doesn't tell us how the older son reacted to his father's final words. Instead, we are left with these two men standing outside the house while everyone else is inside having a wonderful time welcoming the younger son back home. Jesus ends this parable with a cliffhanger as if we're supposed to tune in next week and hear the rest of the story, see the next episode. <laughs> so what are we to make of this? Why does Jesus end the parable without really resolving it? Usually there's a moral or a lesson at the end of the parables, or at least the whole situation is resolved, right? But not this one. 
And had Jesus ended the story, quite frankly, with the younger son coming home and his father throwing the party, that would have been very satisfying for us. Because not only did it include a happy ending, but the moral of the story was clear. That no matter how much we screw up our lives, we are always welcome back home. God will always welcome us home. But Jesus doesn't do that. He leaves us hanging. He leaves us to figure out what we're supposed to learn from the second part of this parable. So I want you all to, to do a little mental game here. I want you to play a game called Guess the Moral. What do you think we're supposed to learn from the second part of the parable? What are we to make of the older brother's behavior? Reverend Ellsworth Callis, the author of Parables from the Backside, which this uh, sermon series is loosely based upon, he thinks that this part of the story is supposed to help us understand that inside each of us, there lives a prodigal. There lives a prodigal person. Now let's flesh that out a little bit. You see, in spite of what many people think, the word prodigal does not describe someone who returns home. No, the, the dictionary defines the word prodigal as one who is wasteful and reckless, which really makes sense when we apply that to the younger son, right? It's clear. He took his inheritance, he squandered it all on extravagant living, whatever you want to define that as. And once he has wasted his, his father's hard-earned money, he, it is clear that he did not appreciate what he had. He did not appreciate what he had been given. He squandered his blessings and in the end had nothing, nothing to show for it. He was a disgrace to his father, Indeed, he was a disgrace to all of humanity. And had the father told him to go and sleep in the barn with the rest of the hired hands when he came home, we, as humans, would have been satisfied with that. Because by human standards, that is what he deserved. But the story is not based on human standards, is it? In addition, when you get right down to it, there are two prodigals in this story. Two who were wasteful and reckless. The first, of course, is the younger son. But the second is the older son. Because he, too, squandered his blessings. He did not appreciate what he had been given. He did not appreciate the home in which he was living. And it had really nothing to do, his, his lack of appreciation had nothing to do with his money or, or his father's money or his inheritance. It had everything to do with his father's love. When the father finds his older son standing outside of the house, he begs him to come in. But the son responds out of anger, I have served you all these years and never, never disobeyed your command. Now, in the original Greek, the word that we have translated into the word served is dual, which means to be a slave to. In other words, the son did not think of his father as his father. Rather, he saw his father as a slave master. He didn't realize how much his father loved him. 
and how blessed he had been to be living with his father. He squandered his birthright just as much as his brother had squandered his inheritance. And it takes his father's patient and loving words to point that out to him. Sometimes we are like the older son. We are so intent on being critical of others, of those who have squandered their blessings, that we fail to realize how much we take for granted. God has blessed us with many, many things. Good health, a strong mind, family, friends. We went through it all when we had the children's message. But the most, the greatest blessing of all is the blessing of God's love, God's amazing, undying love for us. And every time we take something for granted, the prodigal inside of us comes out with a vengeance. At the end of the parable, the father tells his older son you are always with me, and what is mine is yours. In other words, he tells his son that you have been blessed beyond measure. Be thankful for that. Be glad for that. But then the father continues his thought. He says, but your brother, who we thought was dead, is alive. He is home. And for that, we need to celebrate. He is telling his son, don't criticize your brother for having squandered an inheritance, even though that in itself was a blessing. Instead, let us rejoice and celebrate for the lost has been found, for the fallen have returned home where they belong. Now, if I had told this parable instead of Jesus, I would have ended it with the older son having what I call a V8 moment. Do you remember the old V8 commercials back in the 1970s? I was, of course, just a young child. But the, that goes something like this. <laughs> Someone is eating a cupcake or a hot dog or some other unhealthy food when they realize they could have had a V8 vegetable juice instead. And the, the commercial segments always end with that person declaring, wow, I could have had a V8. <laughs> have you ever tasted the stuff? <laughs> <laughs> However, in my version of, of the end of the parable of the prodigal son, the older son would have come to his senses. He would have joined the party and celebrated his brother's return because he not only would have realized how blessed he really was, but he also would have realized that regardless of his blessings, the greater blessing was the fact that his brother was home that his brother, who was thought to be dead, was alive. And for that, they needed to celebrate, all of them. Friends, we should count our blessings every single day and remember just how blessed we really are. It doesn't take much for us to squander our blessings. But more than that, we need to remember that our greatest blessing of all is the blessing of God's love. And hearing God say to us, you are always with me, and what is mine is yours. Amen.
friends, this morning we're going to um, handle our invitation to prayer a little bit differently than we normally have. Uh, first, I do want to share a couple of things that going on in the life of our church, one thing in particular, and that is that uh, next Sunday, after the praise service, we will be offering a, um, a, a membership um, gathering, a, a, a new member gathering. Um, it'll be at about 12.15. Uh, those who need child care, we will make that arrangement. And then also we will have a light, light lunch uh, for those who would like it as well. So um, if you are interested, if you're not a member of this church and you are interested in learning more about the Methodist Church, learning more about Song of Life, whether you're, you want to join by transfer or by um, uh, profession of faith, or if you uh, are already a member of another church and you would like to be either an associate or an affiliate member, come uh, next Sunday at 12.15 and we'll talk all about that. Um, if you can let us know ahead of time that you're going to come, uh, if you have not already done so, we have a list of those folks who have already said that they are planning to come, then um, uh, go ahead and let us know so that we can plan for childcare and food and, and that kind of thing, all right? But today is a special day. Um, actually, tomorrow is a special day. Tomorrow is the second anniversary of the death of one of our own, uh, young Emma Doty, who was about nine years old when she passed away. Emma was um, severely disabled, and um, she was always such a blessing to her family. Uh, the the um, butterflies that you see above are uh, part of her remembrance, and um, the other part of her remembrance um, is that uh, one of the other children in the family, in the Doty family, asked if they could um, offer a, a, a brief video um, remembering her life. And so while you are lifting up your own joys and concerns silently to the Lord, we invite you to share in this video celebrating Emma.
good Lord bless and keep you fill all you with his peace his face will shine upon you even as you sleep every day you're changing sometimes I wish it wasn't true Those of you who don't know the Escabel and Doty family, um, Wendy and Tanya have adopted 15 um, special needs children over the years. And so um, they have, I think, seven at home right now. And so um, also just uh, you see the butterflies again. I mentioned that. Um, they chose the butterfly as a remembrance of, of Emma because of uh, the transformational um, message that the butterflies send to us and offer us. And so let us remember that um, through the butterflies, which you may be seeing in the weeks to come, uh, transformation does occur. And in Emma's case, transformation into eternal life. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we come to you this day, we are grateful for all of the blessings that you have given to us. And we are grateful for Emma's short life because she was such a blessing not only to her family, but also to her church. And God, we lift up ourselves to be a blessing, not just to you, but to others. Help us to be a blessing by being the answer to someone else's prayer. Help us to be a blessing uh, to, to those who need to hear about your love and grace. And Lord, help us always to be uh, mindful of your blessings, to be thankful for your blessings, to be grateful for the ways in which you have blessed our lives now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. And now let us pray together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God has blessed us with many, many things. Sometimes we squander those blessings, and other times we fail to recognize them as blessings provided by our God. As people of faith, we also know we are called to share our blessings with others, especially those in need. As we consider the financial gifts we give this week, may we remember how blessed we truly are and may we be generous in the ways we share those blessings. We invite you to give your financial gifts either online through the links provided on our website, by using our Church Center app, or by placing them in the giving box as you leave worship this morning. Let us now take a moment of prayer of thanksgiving for the givers, the gifts, and those who will benefit from our generosity. For the blessings of this and all our days, we thank you, gracious God. Accept, we pray, not just this money, but also our lives freely offered in gratitude for all you have done for us. Use both our lives and our money in this place and wherever you might take us. Amen. Amen. Let us now join together in our hymn of celebration, Count Your Blessings. The lyrics and the music will be on the screen. i 
invite you in the, in the uh, sanctuary to stand if you are able and comfortable as we close with prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are grateful for the many ways you have blessed our lives. Help us to be a blessing to others. Help us to count our blessings every single day. And help us also remember how the ways that, that you lead us to bless other people can transform their lives as well. Oh God, help us be grateful when the lost has been found. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said, amen. amen. Thank you, friends, for being here today. And for those of you worshiping with us from home, have a blessed week, and we'll see you next Sunday.